afternoon. Welcome to week five and we are going to do uh, the second part of our vegetable cookery. Uh, just to let you know that uh, I have learned from last week's uh, some things to do and don't. Uh, I need to check my camera to make sure that the battery is still going and then we are going to go through these by step by step. Uh, we are doing three items today. We are doing a fondant uh, potato. Uh, then we're also all going to do a ratatouille uh, with a chickpea. And then also we're going to do a roasted cauliflower with some interesting mushrooms uh, for our other dish. So again, we're going to be doing different techniques. Roasting is going to be one. Stewing is going to be another one. And then obviously boiling and then roasting off the fondant potatoes in the oven to finish them off. So what I'm going to start first is I'm going to start with the potatoes because they are going to take the longest to do. So I am going to use uh, a knife uh, to do this, but for our ingredients today we are going to need some butter, we're going to need a bay leaf, we're going to need some thyme, no we don't need an egg, uh, we're going to need chicken and also beef stock. And again, it does call for uh, Yukon Golds are waxy potatoes, but today I am uh, using uh, bakers because I have lots of them in house right now, so I don't want to use those up. So the process is still the same, except that it is going to be a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these. So what I want to do is get them all even so that they're all the same size. So that will help with the cooking process. So again, what I'm going to do now is simply take my knife. It's almost like doing an egg, contour an egg. So I'm going to do three times one way, three times the other way, uh, because it does have a flat side here and more of uh, a round tapered end on one side, uh, I just have to fix that up. But again, I'm going to now put these into a bowl. So I'm just going to slightly take my knife, and I do have a, a knife for this. It is a curved knife. This is for turning. Uh, you can use this with also with a regular pair knife, uh, not a chef knife, no, not, not a good idea. Uh, again, I do it three times on one side and then I flip it over and I do three sides, three turns on this side. So that way there I'm trying to get it as even as possible through this process. Again, flip that over and I'm going to do three sides. Turns on this side, turn on that side, and again turn on that side. You can see that I'm starting to get the shape. Uh, it's, it is going to look like a football. I'm not worried about that yet. So what I'm going to do now is just keep on shaping this along so that I get the both sides roughly the same thickness right across. I'm going across here and going over here because I want to get that one side that was flat earlier. I want to get that a little bit more in that. In your manuals, you'll see a different shape. Uh, it is uh, what they've done is taken the product and then basically put it on a, uh, the board and then they use a cutter, um, cookie cutter of some sort, uh, depending on the size, uh, to get that shape of that cylinder round product. But now I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. And also, fondant potatoes technically is not completely turned all the way around, it is actually has a flat bottom. Okay? So I'm getting pretty well where I want to be with that one too. So I'm going to cut this in half. Again, the same process. I'm going to take this with my knife and turn that one, two, three. Okay? I'm going to flip this over. Again, one, two, three, and then I'm looking at this. I don't have to peel my potatoes, and no, you cannot use your peeler to get the shape. Okay? Some students like to do that, but no, we don't do that. Okay, so I'm going to now just finish this up by getting proper shapes, and again, turning my knife a little bit downwards to this area where it was flat, so that way there you got a little bit more uniform. So, really, do I have five or six? Or seven sides, yes, normally for a good turn potato. Okay, so again, you can see this is kind of tapered down, this one's not yet. So I'm just going to go finish this off, following the contour of that, so that I can get that all 
roughly the same shape red cross. Again, I could take that and keep on going down, or I could just cut off the end. So we have number three there. I'm going to do this again on the side. And just to let you know that they do have Chateau potato spill. People do do the turning of the vegetables. And the reason why is that you want to, to have them on the sides. So that way there when you are actually pan frying them, uh, you're getting a nice coating or color on the potato itself. Okay, I'm just going to flip this over again. And you notice that I didn't peel my potatoes because I'm through this process, I'm doing that. But if you're using the Yukon Gold, save your trimmings because that way there you can uh, put them in, into a pot of water, salt, and actually have mashed potatoes afterwards. Okay, I'm going to get the shape that I want. So keep on going. So it almost looks like a football. Nice parts. Okay, so. Going here. Again, I have my potatoes. Oh, my hands are a little too fat. And I'm going to clean that off into the water. Okay, so I'm going to take this, save those scraps, clean this up, and I'm going to start by putting it on my pan here. And I'm going to put a pot. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to put this probably around 9. I'm going to now add a little bit of oil to this. Uh, it says vegetable oil, but I do not have any vegetable oil, so I'm going to use a little bit of the olive oil here for now. So with this recipe, we do have uh, chicken stock and also beef stock, and that's going to give it the flavor and the color that we need. So again, I'm just going to get some slight little color on these, a little bit of oil, and what we're going to do is we are going to get a little bit of color. Remember, oil and water do, do not like to play with, well with each other, so I'm just going to put this in here, okay? I'm going to toss those around. I do have my chicken and my beef stock. It does say hot and the reason why we want it hot is that way there it doesn't take long to heat it up the stock itself. But since we're doing a small little portion here uh, I'm going to you leave that. Uh, it's only warm now so that's fine. So I'm just going to coat that with a little bit of oil. Also I'm going to have some salt and pepper for that but not too much because there is going to be a reduction here and again I'm, that's why I'm starting this one off first is because it's going to take roughly a hour to do okay getting a little bit of color that's good now, with this process, what's going to happen is you're going to heat up the, the product. You've got the stock in here. As this cooks and it actually uh, comes down, evaporates, it's going to give it flavoring from the broth itself. And then also what we're going to be doing is adding some butter. And the butter is going to sit on top because fat's going to float to the top and it's going to coat over top of, of your product. So I got bay leaves that I'm going to put in here and a little bit of fresh thyme, a little pepper, and a pinch of salt. I do not need to cover these up. Uh, sometimes you can uh, put a little cartouche over top of that uh, again if you want to. So. I'm just going to turn this up. Once it comes to a boil, I am going to move them around again and then put them in the oven to finish off. OK, 
Okay, once we get that in the oven, I'm gonna take a quick pause just to make sure that we are capturing everything and I don't have to start this recipe over again. And it's great with induction because it doesn't take long for it to come to a boil. We've got a nice little potatoes there. Our butter's coming all up. Again, making sure that we get some of that fat over top of it. I could base this again later on while I'm doing this. Nice color. Okay, you can see the fat is now finished. It's completely melted. This is going in the oven. Okay, we're done with the stove here. Get that out of the way. Okay, now that uh, we notice that everything's working properly with the uh, recording, we're going to start on the second dish. The second dish is the ratatouille. And uh, if you ever want to see a fabulous movie, uh, Rat Ratatouille, uh, The Little Rat, uh, because it gives you a great way and descriptions of how the kitchen's laid out. And there's a great message. And food is about emotions and love. And that describes it at the end the best. So I'm not gonna ruin it for anybody, but uh, again, you have time now. So rent the, uh, the movie, sorry, rent. Uh, get it on Netflix. Uh, that was the days of DVDs. That's when we actually rented it. Uh, but now you can get everything online. So, first of all, I have a saute pan. Uh, you can see that I did a little bit of mise en place. Uh, I have here uh, our wonderful chickpeas. Here was the chickpeas that were uh, soaked overnight for 24 hours. These are already cooked off, so they're nice and tender. But because this ratatouille is all going to be roughly the same, it's going to be a stew. I want my other products to be roughly all the same size. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my peppers first, then I'm going to put them in a bowl, and then I am going to uh, saute those, then my eggplant, then my zucchini uh, for that. Okay, so again, I'm going to put this on. So I'm going to put this on medium. Let's go a little bit higher. So two things with the zucchini and the eggplant itself. You can see that the eggplant, I have taken it and I have uh, taken a towel to get the excess moisture out. Whenever I'm doing this for grilling, what I do is always put them in strips and then I line my zucchini and my eggplant. I line them up, I put salt on them, let them sit for around 10 minutes and then I drain some of that water out. Because there's a high content of moisture in there, if you're not doing this properly, what's going to happen is you're going to boil them. And if you boil them, then they're going to break down faster. And you don't want that. So that's why we're doing the three steps today. Now, you can see you have everything here. Put this here. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here first. Remember, a lot of times, one of the things that students do uh, constantly is putting too much oil and then you have this oil on top of your stew later on and it gets a little greasy. So again, I'm going to turn that up, test it out. I hear a little sizzle, up a little bit more. And again, sweating these off a little to get some of that moisture off.
Okay, so. Use my product here. I'm just going to dump this in here. Next, I'm going to, there's a little bit of more oil, not much, and I'm going to quickly saute these up so that way there it has time to release some of the moisture out. I'm going to put that in there. Again, stages. And because this is induction, it happens really fast. You can hear that sizzle. And I will try not to set off the uh, smoke alarm. Now this eggplant itself, uh, because of the grocery stores right now, I try to get a Italian um, eggplant. Italian is a lot rounder, it's almost like a huge football, uh, a lot more purple. This is a Chinese or Japanese eggplant, thinner, a little sweeter too. So sometimes I will make my bubble dish with this. If you don't know what Papa Ganesh is, look it up. So you can see all that steam coming up. That's the moisture that I want to draw out of the product so that way there it doesn't break down into my rag too later on. Okay. Again, releasing some of that moisture itself. Next, just a little bit of oil, not much. And then I'm gonna do my zucchini. Okay, you can see my chickpeas. One is cooked and these ones are still soaking in water. And we don't need that. Again, ratatouille is one of those products that you can make. They freeze up really well also. Okay, next. There we go. In goes my zucchini. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the Chickpeas are something else that you need to get on the stove on the side. You need to cook them up for roughly around, say, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, depending on the product itself, till you get them tender, okay? That's what all you want to do is get them tender because you want to add a little bit of flavor with this in the stewing process so we get a little flavor into the chickpeas. And also because the starch cotton and the legume itself, uh, it will give you a nice sauce consistency. Again, you can see that I'm releasing the moisture out of that. Through that process. Because if I did this, put everything into the pot and crowded it, then what's going to happen is it's going to start to stew and all that moisture from that is going to be released and it's going to break down your products faster and make your sauce a little watery. Okay, you can see that. Here we go. Back on the stove. Now, that's done. I'm going to put my onions in there. I'm going to saute my onions. I can get a little bit of color on this. That's not a problem.
Okay, so we're using a white onion. Uh, it's a little bit sweeter uh, on the flavor profile. You can use a different onion. It's not a problem. You can use a red onion. You can use a cooking onion. That's fine too. But it's up to you to change up these recipes if you want. Okay? So some people will not put the chickpeas in. Some people will cut the vegetables different. That's fine too. The end result is the flavor. Okay, you can see that my onions are getting caramelized. Is that a good thing? Yes. Because the caramelization is going to help with the sweetness. So after that, I'm going to use some garlic. Again, this is the garlic that I get from a farmer up in the uh, Uxbridge area. And again, slightly put that in there. Okay. Wow. That's beautiful. Okay. I know it probably goes in afterwards, but I want to get that flavor and deglaze the bottom. Next. And go my tomatoes I chopped up. Okay, let's turn this down now. Ah, oh, look at that. We are going to put some thyme in here. I like to put my thyme in uh, with pieces like this because it's easier to pull out this, the wood or the sprigs itself uh, and all the, the thyme actually comes off quite nicely in the product. We have a bay leaf in here, good. Now. I'm just going to turn this up, but it will turn down a little bit too much. And I'm going to cook this. So that way there, I get all the flavors together. Uh, just to let you know, last week with our recipes, I did uh, mention to you before that I did take them uh, to a, a neighbor's place uh, next door. We did use that. Okay. One was a fireman that works crazy shifts, and the other one just recently lost their job in the tr travel industry. I kept some of the liquid here from the chickpeas so I can keep that moist. So now I'm just going to put this off the side. It does call for sugar, but it's totally up to you. But myself, I do not like the. Uh, processed sugar so what I do is I have some honey from bees and this is actually from my wife's hive on the third floor at the faculty club at the University of Toronto and uh, they have a couple hives there and I'm going to take this and add a little bit to my product again if you want you can add oregano to this, basil, and for this recipe I am going to add a little bit of basil and a little bit of oregano uh, dry. Uh, this is going to spruce that up a little bit. A pinch. There we are. And a little basil, pinch, and all. okay, we are back. Uh, so now I have put all my ingredients in with the ratatouille. And remember, if you find it that you're stewing this and it's again a little too thin, you can put a little bit of that chickpea water that you actually tendered your chickpeas with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on the back burner. Now, I did take out the potatoes. You can see the potatoes itself. Uh, they have some nice color on it. The broth in the bottom is nicely done also. Uh, so I am going to now just put these off to the side. And remember, the way to test these is simply Stick it in your knife and see if they're coming 
off. See, that's a little bit under still. This one's completely done. So I could put these back in the oven for a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna put them off to the side. So I have my ratatouille, I have my fondant potatoes, and uh, yes, if you are paying attention, there's two instead of four. Actually two of them that I took out earlier, they were overcooked. So if you are paying attention, you're not losing it. Okay, so now my final dish that I'm going to do. I'm going to take a saute pan. I'm going to turn this up. Today's ingredients we are going to have cauliflower florets. We're going to have garlic, scallions at the end, thyme, parmesan cheese, and lemon juice. We are going to have some fungi, that's terminology for mushrooms. We're going to have work with three today. Actually, uh, in your recipe, there's only two, but since we are going to be eating these uh, recipes afterwards, actually, my wife will, uh, we are going to work with a portobello mushroom. Again, this is half. And if you do find that your mushroom uh, ribs down here are really old and they're dark, you want to get rid of that, okay? But this is fairly fresh, so I'm not worried about that. Because here, if they're really dark and they're old, it'll make everything else black. We have the king mushroom. This one here is fabulous. Uh, I like to take them lengthways and marinate with garlic oil, lemon, uh, olive oil, and then I like to grill them on the barbecue and they're always nicely done and they almost taste like steak. Not really like steak, but tastes like steak. And the last one is the shiitake, okay? Shiitake is a very important one. Uh, again, very earthy, okay? So again, I'm gonna finish these up by slicing them up so I can put them in my different containers. To tell the truth, the shiitake uh, was uh, something left over in the fridge. So only had a little bit. So it's like, why worry about it? So now I'm gonna slice this on a bias a bit. And I'm gonna put them there and then my mushroom itself. I'm gonna first by putting my olive oil in the pan. I'm going to do my cauliflower. I'm going to get some color on that. I'm going to give it a little bit of salt. A little pepper. My oven is on, so it is set for roasting. It is at uh, 350, so very important that, that you do have that ongoing. Again, I'm gonna do that first, then I'm gonna go do my mushrooms, finish everything off in the oven. Don't get the garlic, everything else. The two last things that I'm gonna put at the end are my scallions, my Parmesan cheese, and just to freshen up a little bit of lemon juice. So while that's cooking, uh, on my previous one, we talked about the eggplant. And uh, modern thing with technology and for video. Uh, I actually uh, had to uh, go to the store again. So I got you to show you a uh, aubergine. It is a plant. And this one here is the Italian. And this is the Chinese. Chinese uh, for the red tree. I like to use that. Uh, this one can be a little bitter if it's not done properly as far as the color and the thickness. And the color, pretty good dark um, purple on that, okay? Light purple on this. So I'm getting a little bit of color. You can see starting to get a little bit brown, so not a huge issue. Put those over here. I have my knives and season. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna put in some of my mushrooms. Again, I'm just going to nuts. put them where they're actually going to crowd the rest. So I'm going to start off with the ones that are a little bit more meaty, and that's the program mushroom. 
Just to let you know, I move because this pan is hot. Why is it hot? Because this is induction and the pan gets hot, not the rest. Okay, my friends, I'm just going to warm up again in the oven to finish off. Okay. I'm back. My product is stewing. Be this slightly warmer, not too much. The only thing I need to finish this off is some chopped parsley, and I do have chopped parsley right here. Clean as you go, so you don't have a huge mess. Now, with this, I'm doing a little bit different than the recipe itself. I do have truffle oil here that I'm going to finish this recipe up. Because your mushrooms are quite earthy, uh, it lends itself to the mushroom oil. Okay, so simply I get a little bit of color in my mushrooms here. I'm gonna get a little bit more on my cauliflower. Okay, you can start to see some color there. Okay, next I'm gonna use my king mushrooms, put them down there. And then on top, I'm just gonna put those on top of my mushrooms. I don't really want color, I just want the earthing that's coming out. Again, a little bit of salt and pepper on this. And then I'm going to finish this off with some shaved garlic because I want to have that aroma and I'm using the shape. And again, these are Ontario Golf, the fall ones. Uh, you can see in the middle itself, it's starting to get this little root. Actually, that is a sprout. So this is starting to sprout on me uh, because it's a little bit older, uh, sitting in the dry cellar. And that's where you're gonna get your uh, uh, new sprout, and you can plant those bulbs if you want later on. And that's something I'm thinking about now, since I have all this extra time, is that perhaps I'll start to germinate seeds for the summer months. Because who knows how long this crazy world is going to last with all this turmoil. Okay, so now I'm getting some color on that. I have my garlic that I'm going to throw in there. And because it is a little bit older, I'm going to put a little bit more in than I would normally do. So, you can see that, the aroma happening. A little pinch. And a little pepper. Okay. Now it's going to become nice and aromatic with that garlic. In goes the thyme. Just going to give a little splash of the truffle oil while it cooks. Nice and earthy. Okay, this is going in the oven. Clean that up. And we'll finish that off. So, so far we have done our ratatouille. It's stewing in the back there. I uh, just have to finish that off shortly with some uh, parsley that's already been chopped up. Our fondant potatoes are ready to go, so we can uh, start to plate that up shortly and then everything else. So I'm going to taste our ratatouille. See where we're at on that. Wow, quick, good flavors.
Okay. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And again, you want it sauce consistency. You don't want it so that it is too dry, but you want it also so that it does look like stew. Your chickpeas are now completely done. They're not too crunchy. They're nice and tender. So now I can plate that up. Turn off my elements. So I have a plate here that I'm going to use. Not too saucy. Right amount. I have my parsley. That I'm going to chop up, that I put on top. A little bit of color. The rest goes into my pot. A little garnish on top of that. And we have our first dish. So I'm going to put this over here for now. Let's put it up on the top there. And that's dinner. Okay, so that is the one fish. Next, I'm going to do the fondant potatoes. And I have a plate here that I'm going to utilize. Okay, so I don't know where this left off, but we have our three dishes here. I don't know if we've seen it all, but we finished this off with the roasted cauliflower uh, with the mushrooms. We finished it off with a little bit of lemon juice, and then we also uh, top it off with some fresh parmesan and the scallions at the end. We have our fondant potatoes here. Uh, again, nicely cooked. Uh, you can see the color on here. Nice little glaze and nice little shine. And then we have a little bit of the jus over here. So remember the jus itself, uh, again, I am not going to waste that. I'm going to keep that because I had two that were overcooked. Put those two in there, mash them up for a nice little dish. And last, we have the ratatouille with the wonderful chickpeas and then chopped parsley at the end and then a nice little garnish. So hopefully you learned something today and got something useful. We'll go over this later on. Thank you.